All right, folks, well, welcome back to a new episode of Chuck's a Cooking. And today we are going to build upon our last recipe or our last video, which was the whole or the wheat pie crust. And we are going to use those pie crust or that pie dough that I made in that last video. And we are going to be making what turns out to be a strawberry rhubarb pie. Originally, I had intended to make a, a totally a rhubarb pie. And when I went to the grocery store, I bought all of the rhubarb they had and they didn't have enough to make a whole rhubarb pie. So you can very easily adapt this recipe to make it into a strawberry rhubarb pie or a blueberry rhubarb pie simply by making up what you don't have as far as rhubarb and using strawberry or blueberries to fill out the recipe and nothing changes in regards to the to the sugar or the amount of flour that you want to use in it. Now in the course of making this video or this particular pie, I actually you'll see where I come up a little short in the end and what I would recommend doing I added in the recipe I added one third cup of flour in this. Now I used a bigger uh, pie plate than what it called for in the recipe. And I think if I had up the flour from one third cup to one half cup, the results would have been a little better. So that is what it is. And I have to say, I'll tell you that this is the first time I made this recipe in such a large pie plate. And that I believe is the cause of where we ended up. Iterate, folks, if you want to find a link to that uh, previous video for the pie crust, you can find that right up here in the uh, right hand corner. And if you don't want to have a wheat pie crust, simply use all flour in the recipe. It'd be two and a half cups of all purpose flour rather than one and a quarter cups of all purpose flour and one and a quarter cups of wheat flour. I simply adapted the recipe to make it into the wheat recipe. All right, folks, so let's get turned around and see where we're going with this. All right, so I've got my rhubarb here, and I don't know if you can see, it's kind of shaped like celery, except it's got this curve to it where the leaves come out. Basically, I'm gonna trim off some of the ends off of these, just where they've been cut for a while and make them look a little nicer. So what we need for our pie is four to five cups of filling or fruit or whatever you want. You can see that the color is really only on the surface of the, of the stalk here. So I've got my measuring cup here and we're going to cut these in pretty small pieces here. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. Because my battery ran out on my primary camera and I didn't realize it. So at any rate, I've got my rhubarb here and you can see it's kind of shaped like celery. And I've trimmed up the ends and taken as much or any, I got a little bad spot right there maybe. I'm going to take that off of it. Put my trash right there. And then we're going to just cut this in little pieces here. A quarter to a half inch, I'm saying. And this is probably going to be the hardest part of making this pie, if you believe it or not. And I'll put that in my measuring cup. That's a four cup or one quart measuring uh, cup there. And if I don't have enough for four to five cups of rhubarb, I'm going to make up the difference with strawberries.
Yeah, so I'm definitely going to need some strawberries here because I do not have four cups there. It's probably about, oh, I'm going to say probably about three cups there right now. So I want to put a couple cups of uh, strawberries in here. Now I decided to buy organic strawberries. And the reason being is because some of these daggone strawberries these days are just gigantic. Kind of unnatural to me. And so I also think that maybe the smaller strawberries have a better flavor. Even though these are organic, I did still go ahead and rinse them off. Okay, so that looks like a nice colorful batch for a pie filling. I'll put that all right into my big bowl here. Get rid of some of all this. We don't need any of it anymore. All right, so into our cut up fruit and vegetables. We need to add a third of a cup of flour here. And flour is going to be a thickening agent here. It's going to help make it so we don't have a runny pie filling. And then we need to add in, it says, now you base this on the tartness of your rhubarb here, and anywhere from one and a third to two cups of sugar. I'm going to put in one and a half cups sugar into this mix here. Here goes one. That's about a half by my calibrated eyeball. We're going to take our spatula here and we're just going to mix this up real good. Now what's going to happen here is the juices are going to start getting pulled out of the strawberries and the rhubarb. Just as if you were going to be making, um, say, strawberry. Yeah. Just like if you were going to be making strawberry shortcake. If you haven't seen that video, look up here, no, here in the right hand corner. And you'll see where you can get a link to that. We just want to give it a good stir here and we're going to let that sit for a few minutes. Now then, we're going to start preheating our oven to 425 degrees here in a moment. Let's leave that in there. We do not need any more flour, any more sugar unless we choose on the top of our pie to give it a little crust of sugar. Okay, so I'm going to get set up to begin putting our pie together here, and we'll be right back. Now my pie pan here, or pie bowl actually, because it's made out of glass, I guess, is nine and a half inches. Now, we're going to begin rolling this out. We do need a little flour here. Keep it from sticking to our pastry mat in this case. Yeah. Here's the one thing that I found when you get it cold is it kind of wants to split on you a little bit. Just pinch it back together. flour on it.
give it a turn occasionally so you're you know you're keeping the dough even if you have to get a glass of water and you can use that to kind of paste paste your cracks back together again only thing is make sure that you throw some flour back on them like that because it will start sticking to your roller or to your mat okay so that's out to about the 10 inch circle now now there's a lot of different ways you can get this onto your pie pan. One of the easiest may be just roll it onto your rolling pin there just like that and then turn around and unroll it onto your pan just like that. I can push these cracks or whatever back together nobody will ever know except you okay now then we're going to come in with our with our fill in here want to get all the good stuff out of your bowl I might cut up just a few more strawberries to put in this because it will cook down so let me do that oh there's a couple I missed right there I just go ahead and use up the rest of these strawberries in this pie I think I will Okay, I think that'll work pretty good right there. Good enough. And this strawberry becomes the cook's privilege. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to set that out of the way. And we are going to roll the other half of this pie shell out. Just like we did the first one. Now this, the dough has actually had a little bit of time to warm up and it doesn't seem to be cracking quite as bad as the first one. However, the warmer it gets, the stickier it's going to get on you. Now we got this out to our 10 inches again. Use a little water to repair our cracks that we need to. Now I'm going to roll this onto my pin. Bring my pie back. Just like that. Now I'm going to take a knife and go around. Now I'm, this is this is the worst part of a pie for me. I am a terrible at fluting a pie or pinching the edge around the crust. I know it's a simple skill.
Okay, that's not too bad. Now I'm gonna put cut some vents into this. You need so you need a way to let the steam out of your pie. Not sure I got that exactly centered. But what the heck. Now we need to bake this for 40 to 50 minutes at 425. I'm probably going to check this at about 30 minutes and make sure that the edge of my actually I'm going to put this onto a, a cookie sheet is so that if this should uh, kind of bubble over it bubbles over on the cookie sheet and not inside my oven so we're going to check this after about 30 minutes and make sure that our the edge of our crust is not burning if it is we'll we'll put foil around the edge that will shield it set my timer for 30 minutes alright folks we'll be back shortly now I don't know if you can see it very well but the edge of this pie is getting quite brown and so I definitely want to foil it smells great so I'm just going to take some little strips of foil like this Go around the edge like so and that will help prevent it from browning any further. Be careful you don't burn yourself. I mean, after all this has been in a 425 degree oven. Okay, so I will tell you this is a non-stick pan and it's very slippery, especially with that glass pie plate in there. So I'm going to put this back into the oven for the remaining 10 minutes here. And then we'll bring it out and start letting it cool. Okay folks, the timer went off. Our pie should be done. I'm going to go ahead and pull this foil off now. You can see how we are starting to boil up some of the juices through the vent hole there. So what I'm going to do, move that pan out of the way. We did not boil over onto the pan. But it's there just in case. So I'm going to let that sit and rest. We'll take another look at that come dinner time tonight. I guarantee you that is way too hot to be eating right now. Alright folks, so it is time to give this a try. I think that's about the center. That was a little off on my Maybe a little off on my vents there. So the moment of truth is coming here in just a moment. We get to find out how we did one of these days. I keep saying I want to do it. I haven't done it. I'm going to buy myself a pie wedge. Ah, well that didn't work out very good. All I got was the top.
Okay, so it could have been a little thicker. But you don't think that's going to stop me from enjoying this, do you? I hope not. Now I've actually seen where some people put an egg in this pie in order to thicken it a little bit. And since I like ice cream, there we go. This is the time that I get to uh, turn around here and put my hard work to use. Alright folks, you know what time it is. It's my favorite time. Alright folks, well, rhubarb pie is nothing new to me. I've had it ever since I was a kid. My grandmother used to make it. Grandma, my Dorothy, Grandma Dorothy. The one who I got the recipe for the scalloped potatoes, which you can find that video up here in the right hand corner. So, I've been enjoying this for basically all of my life. Now, it's time to give this a try. Now, originally pies were a method of preserving food, or preserving fruits for a little bit, through the use of sugar. Hmm. I think I got my sugar level just perfect on this. Still just a little bit of tartness, but definitely some sweetness there too. Definitely a great spring pie right here, folks. Folks, if you like what you're seeing, down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe, and stay tuned. There's always more to come. And thanks for watching.